All right, well, if you would, turn with me in your Bible to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. I'm going to read the first eight verses here in just a second. We know that um, last week we celebrated the triumphal entry of Jesus coming in and we know that he came into uh, Jerusalem for the last time on his journey to the cross. And as he went to the cross, he was crucified there. He was buried in the tomb. And as we've heard this morning already, that he rose again, right? Amen, amen. I want to, I want to focus on that this morning just for a minute, is the fact that he is alive, that he's risen. Starting in verse 1, it says, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven, and he came and rolled back the stone from the door, and he sat on it. And his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him, and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come and see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead, and indeed, he's going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to bring his disciples' words. Let's pray. Father, again, I ask you to to be with us today, Father. As your word is proclaimed, Father, I pray that you would use it to speak to hearts here today, Father. And Father, would you please move freely here today, speak to hearts, and may we listen and obey what you tell us, Father. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and amen. So, Easter, it's much more than bunnies and colored eggs and uh, more than Easter bonnets and pretty dresses, even more than jelly beans, even though I'm a big fan of jelly beans. But even, it's more than uh, Sunday church service, more than family get-togethers. Easter is the greatest event in all of history. It's the greatest event that ever happened. It's the day our Lord Jesus Christ rose from the grave to conquer sin and to conquer death. And the good news today is he's risen. As we've heard that, he's no longer in the tomb. He is alive today. That sets us apart from any other religion is the fact that we worship a risen, living Savior. Amen? Amen. I love the song, the old hymn, Because He Lives. And I think it sums, it sums it all up, right? God sent His Son, they called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. Because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Because I know He holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen? Amen. That's a hard one to read, too. How many was singing that as I was reading it? It's one of them that you can't, you can't say it without singing it as you go. Because he lives, though. If, if, if it would have ended at the cross, then it would have changed everything, right? If he would have went, went to the cross and never, never raised then we would be no different than these other religions that are out there. But the fact that he lives means a lot to us. And that's what I want to look at real quick is the fact that what does the fact that Jesus lives, what's the fact that, what does that mean to us as, as Christians? But the first thing I want us to look at is because he lives, our sin debt is paid in full. Because he lives... Isaiah 53, 5 and 6 tells us, it says, But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and we like sheep have all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, 
And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. And by his stripes we are healed. 1 Peter 2.24 tells us, it says, He himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Because he died and rose again, our sin debt is paid. We have a problem as, as humans. We have a problem, and we have a, a sin problem. We all fall short of, of God's standards, of his perfection, right? We all sin. I don't care who you are, how good of a person you are, we still we fall short, and we can't do enough good things or try hard enough to ever meet that perfection level, right? We fall short. God loves us so much that he sent his son to take care of that debt that we could never pay. He sent a son to, to die on that cross. Jesus willingly went to the cross and he took upon himself the sins of the whole world. And when I say the whole world, that's everybody that ever was, everybody that ever is, everybody that's ever going to be, anybody that, that ever is going to be on this earth, Jesus paid for all those sins that day on that cross. I talk to people that say, you know, I was saved, but you know, then I messed up, and and you know, I, I just, I don't think God's with me anymore. But you know, when He said it's finished on that cross, He paid for your past, present, and future sins. He paid for it all. His sacrifice was the perfect sacrifice to pay for all of that. He paid a price that we could never pay. We now have direct access with God because He lives, right? Colossians 1.21 says, And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now He has reconciled in the body of His flesh through the death to present you holy and blameless and above reproach in His sight. You know, God is a holy and righteous God. And God cannot look upon sin. And because we sin, then we're alienated, as it says. Alienated or, or separated from Christ. Separated from God because of our sin. God can't look upon us. But before, in the Old Testament times, a high priest would go in once a year into the temple into the Holy of Holies and offer a sacrifice for the people's sins a year. This, this Holy of Holies was separated by a veil, separate from all the other people. They couldn't see it. It was all, all behind this veil. Well, when Jesus came and died on that cross with all of our sins, it says that the veil was torn, right? The veil was torn from top to bottom. It was ripped in half. Open up the Holy of Holies. Because we now have direct access to God through this. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, there's a, um, an exchange that happens here. Jesus came and lived a perfect life, a sinless life here on this earth. He never sinned. When he went to the cross, he was the perfect sacrifice. So when he took our sin upon him, and died on the cross, now he can offer us his perfect righteousness, right? So there's an exchange there. We no longer have our sin nature. If we accept Christ, we now have Jesus' perfect righteousness. So now when God looks down upon us, he sees us through the righteousness of Christ. He no longer looks at our sin nature. Ain't that awesome? The fact that we can go before him boldly as somebody that has never sinned. We can go boldly before the, the throne of God itself and make our petitions to Him as someone who has never sinned. Only because of what Jesus done. Not anything that we've done. Right? So, so when we fall, when we, when we mess up, that sin 
It's already been paid for. It's no longer ours. A lot of times it's harder for us to forgive ourselves because Jesus has already paid the price to forgive us, right? And he says when we go to him and ask for forgiveness, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness, right? He's already paid the price. He's just asking us to accept that gift, right? But we have that we have that direct access. And the awesome thing is he says, I'll never leave you, I'll never forsake you. We can call to him at any time, day or night. You never be alone when we have Christ in us. Another thing I want us to look at real quick is the fact that we have a home in heaven now. Because he rose again, we now have a home in heaven. When Jesus rose and went back to the Father, when he overcome death, now we too can overcome death and we can live with, it, with him for eternity. John chapter 14, one of my favorite verses, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Because Jesus lives, we now have a home in heaven waiting on us. Prepared by Jesus himself. And Jesus himself is going to come back and receive us and take us to that home someday. You know, if you live to be 150 years old, that's still a short time in the span of eternity. And we are going to leave this old world one way or the other. Amen? We're going to, we're going to leave it either through death or maybe the good Lord come back and take his church home. But one way or another, we're all going to leave. We've all got, a, got an appointment to leave this old world. And when we leave this world, we're going one or the other. Right? We're either going to home in heaven or we're going to a place that's eternally separated from God. And that place is called hell. A place that was never designed for any of us. You know, God will never send somebody there. If we go there, it's because we refuse the gift that God has made available for each one of us. When he said it was finished on the cross, everything was accomplished for us to have that free gift of salvation that he's offering, everything. When we put our trust and our faith in Jesus, and Jesus alone, he forgives us of our sins, and he comes to live in our heart. You know, Romans 10, 9 says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He's already paid the price. He asks that we come to him in faith believing, ask him to forgive us, and he says he will forgive us. And not only forgive us, he'll come and live in our hearts and we'll be saved. And we'll have them wonderful promises that God gives each one of us. The fact that we, we will have a home in heaven. The fact that we do have direct access to him. The fact that he loves us and never leave us and never forsake us. You know, He's coming back. He's coming back. The same way he rose from the grave and ascended and went to heaven, he's going to come back, the Bible tells us. He's going to come back and take his church home. And, and I, know, I know a lot of people say, well, it could be any day. But guess what? It could be any day. It could be today. All prophecy is fulfilled Nothing's holding him back other than his love for each one of us. I believe that's the only thing that's keeping him from coming back and getting his church today is the fact that he loves you so much that he wants to give you another chance to accept him. He doesn't want to see anyone go to hell. He doesn't want to see anyone perish, he says. But all that would come to repentance and all that would come to know him. As we close today 
I asked you, do you know him? God loves you. And he loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross to pay for your sin, to pay for my sin. But he didn't stay there. Because three days later, he rose again and conquered death and hell. That's how much God loves each one of you. That's what Easter is all about. I know the world wants to confuse it and call it Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and jelly beans and them stuff's all right, but it's not what it's about. It's about Jesus, Him crucified, Him raised from the dead. Today, that resurrection power is available to each one of us. Available to each one of us here today. If you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't leave here today without knowing Him. Don't leave here today without making sure that you have a home waiting on you in heaven if something was to happen to you today. We can know that we know, the Bible tells us. We don't have to guess. Maybe you're here today and it's been a long time. Maybe you're a Christian, but maybe you fell a little bit far out of fellowship with God. You know, the Bible tells us that if we're saved, we can never lose that. Never. We can't lose our salvation. But we can fall out of fellowship. We can let sin creep into our life and kind of put that barrier between us and God. You might even feel like God doesn't even love me anymore. But let me assure you, the Bible tells us that God loves you. That even that sin has been paid for on the cross. And he simply asked for you to turn, turn back to him, ask for forgiveness, and he'll restore that fellowship. He'll, he'll restore that fellowship in each one of you. I think the, some of the most uh, miserable people in the world are Christians that are out of fellowship with God. God loves you too much to leave you in that situation. So he's going to do whatever it takes to bring you back to him. Amen. So maybe that's you today. Maybe today is a fresh start for you. Easter morning, you can have that resurrected life today when you say, you know what? I want a clean start. I want a fresh walk with Jesus Christ today. Maybe that's you. Maybe God's speaking to you on some other thing. I don't know what it is, but... My prayer today is whatever God's speaking to you, that you'd listen to him and that you'd obey him. That's my prayer for each one of you today. Let's pray. Father, we, we come to you again now. We thank you again for your word. We thank you, God, for the fact that you did send your son, that you loved us so much that you sent him to die on a cross to pay a price that I could never pay, Father and a price that he didn't deserve. And Father, I thank you the fact that he didn't stay in that grave, that he rose again, that he defeated death, defeated hell. And Father, we now have that home in heaven with you, that no matter what happens on this old earth, we know we're secure and safe in your hands. I pray for each one here, Father, if there's one here that needs to make a decision, I pray that you would speak to their hearts. Give them the courage to step out this morning, Father, whatever it is you're asking them to do. And we ask this all in Jesus' name, and amen.